All right. Here we go. Okay, can everybody hear me okay? Please indicate in the chat box. I'm trying a different mic today to see if we don't get that uh, squeaky sound. Can everybody hear me? Good. Okay, does this sound, uh, oh good, it does sound better. Good, I'm using a different mic, okay. Low level to you, turn your sound up then. Okay. All right. Now, I know some of you have already looked up the third nervous system and none of them are what you think it is. <laughs> so we're going to have a good class today. Okay. Low level, but no scratchy sound. That's good. Okay. Excellent. Let's see here. Here we go. Okay. Drop that down just a bit. But okay, I don't see my picture up there. I don't know why. That's kind of odd. Should have my picture up while I'm talking. Can everybody still hear me? Can everybody still hear me? Huh. Well, I don't know why my picture isn't up there. That's uh, maybe the class will go better if you can't see my picture. <laughs> That is kind of odd. I haven't seen that happen before. But guess we'll have to deal without it. Okay. Third nervous system. What are the first two? The autonomic and somatic divisions. And we're going to discuss those at a later date. So we're going to talk about the chromaffin system. Now, how many of you are familiar at all with the chromaffin system? Let's see that over in the text box over here. How many of you are familiar with the chromaffin system? Okay, we have one or two yeses there. That's good. That's just part of what we're uh, Yes, an ID your picture. I don't know what that means. Oh, oh, there it is. I had to click another button there. Okay, very good. I just couldn't see it. All right. Okay. Chromaffin cells, also called theochromocytes, are classically defined as elements derived from neuroectoderm, innervated by preganglionic sympathetic nerve fibers, capable of synthesizing and secreting catecholamines, such as dopamine, noradrenaline, or adrenaline. Groups of such hormone-secreting cells are associated structurally and functionally with the sympathetic nervous system. Now, that's going to become very important later, as we'll see. This system comprises a large number of masses of tissue similar in development, structure, and histochemical reactions to the medulla of the suprarenal adrenal gland called chromaffin because of its affinity for chromium salts. The masses of tissue all originate in intimate association with the sympathetic nervous system and the characteristic chromaffin cells. The neurons of the sympathetic ganglia are derived mainly from a common mother cell, the cell of the neural crest. It includes the medulla of the suprarenal gland, the extra suprarenal chromaffin bodies, which may occur in any part of the sympathetic system, though they are most numerous in the abdomen. 
The majority of the extra suprarenal chromaffin bodies are adjacent to the aorta, the para-aortic chromaffin bodies. Some cells in the wall of the intestine contain granules giving the chromaffin uh, reaction and are termed enterochromaffin cells. The extra suprarenal chromaffin bodies are encapsulated structures. Non-encapsulated collections of chromaffin cells may be associated with any of the sympathetic ganglia. The largest collections of abdominal paraaortic chromaffin bodies are found in the celiac and mesenteric plexuses. The carotid body, or glomus paroticum, is situated close to the bifurcation of the common carotid artery adjacent to the carotid sinus, sometimes wedged in between the roots of the internal and external carotids, or at a higher level, and shows a slight chromaffin reaction, but is not considered part of the chromaffin system. Now remember that because uh, now I got this information out of a variety of texts. So some of them consider the carotid body not a part of the chromaffin system. The corpus coccygium is a small vascular body lying immediately anterior to the tip of the coccyx, an intimate rela relation with the branch of the median uh, sacral artery and with the ganglion impar of the sympathetic truck, trunk and a group of smaller bodies of sim similar structure. Now the ganglion impar, you might remember, is the only place where the sympathetic chains come together on the anterior of the coccyx. So that's a very important structure. The corpus and its satellite bodies are enclosed in a fibrous capsule and sheathing them individually, not giving a chromaffin reaction or included in the chromaffin system. Again, remember that because this says none of these are. All chromaffin tissue develops an intimate relation with the synthetic nervous system, the sympathetochromaffin tissue. This includes the medulla of the suprarenal glands, paraaortic bodies, paraganglia, carotid bodies, and small masses of cells scattered irregularly and variably among the ganglia of the paravertebral sympathetic chains, flanknet nerves, and the great prevertebral autonomic plexuses may be associated closely related to various organs such as the heart, liver, kidney, ureter, prostate, epididymis, ovary, etc. Now, isn't that odd? Because this out of a different one says that all of those that this says weren't in the chromaffin system, says they are. So different, uh, uh, for example, one of these came out of Gray's anatomy, one of them came out of Cunningham's anatomy. So Gray's and Cunningham don't agree on that particular thing. Enterochromaffin cells are found in the epithelial tissue lining the gastrointestinal and respiratory tracts and amine storing mast cells found in connective tissues of the gut, pancreas, and the liver. <clears throat> These have ability to take up and decarboxylate amino acids called aphid cells, which we'll get to that, and other non chromaffin uh, cells in the walls of the gastrointestinal and res respiratory tracts, pancreas and other endocrine glands have similar ultrastructure and amino acid uptake characteristics and paraneurons having many of the features of chromatin cells and synthetic ganglia raise questions about the advisability of continuing to restrict the term chromatin system to the true chromatin cells. Maybe more appropriate to consider them as a part of a diffuse neuroendocrine system. So now we're going to kind of unify some of these things here. So some of them have true chromaffin, chromaffin tissue and some do not. <clears throat> the diffuse neuroendocrine system. In 1938, studies of Farter drew attention to the existence of isolated groups of hormone secreting cells which were not restricted to specific endocrine glands, but which were widely scattered throughout the tissues of the body. Farter described these cells as clear cells or held Vinland, noted that they were particularly prominent in the gut and the pancreas. They have since been classified as 
types of aphid cells, which you mentioned before, amine precursor uptake and decarboxylation. There are characteristic amine handling properties and have been shown to manufacture structurally related peptides which act as hormones or neurotransmitters. Although in others, the main secretion is similarly, uh, similarly acting amine. Collectively, the aphid cells comprise a system far more extensive than that visualized by Farder, including, among others, promaffin cells, cyst cells, peptide producing cells of the hypothalamus, pituitary, pineal, parathyroids, and placenta, and the Kolchitsky cells of the lung. So far, some 40 different cells have been categorized as the diffuse neuroendocrine system. Peers proposed that cells manufacturing peptide hormones shared a common set of cytochemical characteristics, the most striking being related to the production of biogenic amines, such as adrenaline, noradrenaline, dopamine, 5 hydroxytryptamine, et cetera. It could be linked to the process of peptide hormone production in general, from which the designation aphid cell rose. Peers suggested that all cells of the aphid series are derived from neuroendocrine program cells of the ectoblast, and others suggest that some aphid cells, such as the gastroenteropancreatic endocrine cells, may similarly be programmed, but of endodermal origin. Peers suggested the aphid cells may collectively be considered as a third division of the nervous system. So here we are, acting as the third line effectors to support, modulate, or amplify the actions of neurons in the autonomic and somatic divisions and of each other. So here we got the tie-in of the endocrine system, basically, with the nervous system, now the neuroendocrine system. They possess activities which are slower in onset and longer in duration than those cells in the autonomic division, which in turn bury similar function, functional relationship to the faster acting neurons of the somatic division. The various secretions of the aphid cells of the diffuse neuroendocrine system may act upon contiguous cells, upon groups of nearby cells, or upon distant cells after transport in the blood. In this respect being considered as intermediate between the locally acting transmitters produced by neurons and the distantly acting secretions of the discrete endocrine glands. So they have local actin, acting, here I am misspelling again, and distant acting. Now, how many of you um, have heard of a couple of these things here? And uh, let's talk about that. How many of you have heard of the diffuse neuroendocrine system? Let's see that in the box over here. Diffuse neuroendocrine system. Donaldson, yes. Dixon, yes. A couple of no's in there. No, so we're learning something, okay. Okay, how many of you have heard the aphid cells? The aphid cells, how many of you have heard of those? See that in the box over there? No, nope. no, pretty uniform there, never. How many of you heard of the SIF cells? See that in the box, how many of you have heard of the SIF cells? No. Nope. Okay, so good, we're learning some things here. Okay. Now, I want you to notice that all these are linked together. Look at, look at this. Hypothalamus, pituitary, pineal, parathyroid, placenta, and Kolchitsky Col cells of the lung. So here we have an intercommunication of all of these glands and organs. Uh, neurologically here, okay? Uh, 
Now, we've talked before somewhat about the thyroid. And one of the things that I discussed in there was that uh, the thyroid itself will transform uh, T4 cells into T3, and they'll produce T4 cells. It has TSH. And one of the things that we discussed there is that every cell in the body actually produces thyroid hormone also, okay? Well, here we have uh, the individual cells of the body producing, uh, you know, most everything else also. We, we also discussed about how the fat cells produce all the sex hormones, okay? And you have fat cells all over the body. So basically, what we have here is every cell in the body can produce almost every hormone that the body needs, okay? How many of you knew that? I see that in the, in the box over here. How many of you knew that most every cell in the body could produce almost every hormone that the body needs? Okay, didn't know that, okay. Sounds familiar to one person, okay. So, ah, oh, Dr. Garbutt knew it, okay. Hi, Dr. Garbutt, yeah, way down there in Florida. Okay, now the diffuse neuroendocrine system thus complements and links the nervous and the endocrine systems. All three systems interacting to provide a sensitive mechanism allowing for homeostatic control. Now, be that as it may, you know, just really think about this. You have to have the individual cells producing to some extent all of the hormones or they can't have an instantaneous reaction when needed, which we're gonna talk about later, okay? So you have to have all the cells in the body to some extent doing it because they need to have an immediate reaction at certain times. So it only makes sense. It has been suggested that deviations in the relative levels of the secretions of the different cell types of the diffuse neuroendocrine system may result in many of the disorders currently described as psychosomatic or frankly psychotic, which may lead to significant clinical progress in the treatment. So, the diffuse neuroendocrine system. When it's not working right, they can produce psychoses. So basically your state of mind depends on the state of your whole body being able to do all the functions that it should do. So you have the uh, somatopsychic. So a lot of the somatopsychic deals directly with the diffuse neuroendocrine system. How many of you knew that or were aware of it to some degree? Can't have been because you didn't know about the diffuse neuroendocrine system. <laughs> so the state of the body producing all the hormones that it needs directly influences psychosis and your state of mind. The suprarenal medulla is composed of groups and columns of trimethyl cells. So you got just bunches of them in, in the adrenal glands. They synthesize and secrete noradrenaline and adrenaline into the venous sinusoids. The release being under preganglionic sympathetic control. Now, paraganglia. How many of you have heard of paraganglia before? Let's see that over in in the discussion box. How many of you have heard of the paraganglia before? No, no, yes, maybe. <laughs> okay, Alvin. Okay, yes, we have a couple of yeses. There we go. The paraganglia are generally defined as extra adrenal aggregations of permethrin tissue widely distributed along and within the autonomic nervous system adjoining various autonomic ganglia. Cells similar to those which characterize various autonomic ganglia are also found within sympathetic ganglia. 
or they're referred to as small, intensely fluorescent or SIF cells. So there's the definition of SIF. In the walls of various viscera and in a variety of retroperitoneal and mediastinal locations. Okay, this explains patients who look like they have a chromocytoma, but none found, exactly. Uh, because they can have them in a variety of very small areas that basically are undetectable because it's so widespread. That's exactly right, Dr. Dixon. Okay. Intraneurally dis disposed act is uh, the intraneurally uh, disposed act is interneurons. So connections between nerves. We're going to have a whole seminar on interneurons, by the way. Uh, it's a lot different than probably you're used to thinking about it. And the remainder are sources of a variety of endocrine secretions, including a tryptophan containing protein as well as catecholamines. So here we have catecholamines. And probably many of you are aware that nobody develops properly without uh, enough tryptophan, tryptophan and lysine especially. How many of you knew that tryptophan and lysine are the determinants of uh, size of growth of humans and animals? Tryptophan and lysine. Growth itself of animals and humans are around those two. Dr. Dixon knew that. And so basically those two are what are missing in most carbohydrates, uh, carbohydrate-based uh, uh, diets. And that's why a whole lot of individuals that are vegans uh, are really doing poorly because they're not consuming plants that are high in tryptophan and lysine, which by the way, are raw nuts, seeds, and legumes, which are beans, peas, and lentils. We'll get into things like that in a future seminar also. This diffuse collection of extra adrenal comathrin tissue is referred to as the paraganglion system. There's the paraganglion. Type 1 cells of the paraganglion receive a preganglionic sympathetic innervation like that of comathrin cells of the adrenal medulla. Paraganglia should be considered as endocrine organs. The secretory cells manufacture catecholamines and proteins stored until stimulated to be released by intrinsic and extrinsic factors. So they're sitting there waiting to release uh, on demand certain hormones and certain uh, peptides. As well as having a remote endocrine effect, a local paracrine uh, action by these secretions on nearby cells occur. So uh, uh, we're gonna discuss this a little bit uh, in just a few minutes. But that, that becomes really important. The paraganglia, uh, okay, somebody's uh, microphone is not shut off, so please shut your microphone off. Paraganglia collectively comprise a diffuse system which may act throughout life as a source of catecholamines, additional to those provided by the adrenal medulla, assuming a role of considerable metabolic and clinical significance. Para aortic bodies. In adults, para-aortic bodies are present as discernible structures, mainly in the vicinity of the celiac and superior mesentery arteries, while only microscopic collections of chromatin cells persist in association with the lower parts of the, of the intermesentery plexus. How many of you have heard of para-aortic bodies before? Let's see that in the discussion box over here. How many of you have heard of para-aortic bodies? Okay, okay. a few yeses in there. Okay, somebody, I gotta mute you there. There we go. Okay. Although the chromaffin cells of the sympathetic ganglia may act as inner neurons, those of the other extra adrenal chromaffin cells are endocrine in nature and probably subserve the adrenal medulla as sources of catecholamines. 
There's also ultrastructural evidence that chromaffin cells associated with nodes of the solar plexus have processes extending beyond the ensheathing glial cells toward blood capillaries into which their catecholamines pass. Okay, the carotid bodies are innervated by carotid branches of the glossopharyngeal nerve, so right up by the tongue, including the carotid sinus nerve and by a fine plexus containing the glossopharyngeal, vagal, and sympathetic components. So uh, these can be directly affect, uh, as accessed, uh, and basically uh, uh, influencing all these by searching for hypersensitive or painful areas in the tongue. How many of you knew that? Let's see that in the talk box over here. No, no, no. And we talk about that in part one uh, of uh, my seminar series. Okay, yes, because of your training. Thank you, Dr. Douglas. Uh, but yeah, now one of the things that I asked everybody to look at in part one is that to stimulate a nerve, uh, you can stimulate any part of the nerve to cause the nerve to fire. Okay. For example, if you want to stimulate the vagus nerve, for example, you can work on the tongue. You can work on the nose. You can work right up and down the throat like this. You have the auditory aspect, uh, which is on the back of the pinna, and the posterior aspect of the external auditory meatus. How many of you knew that you could stimulate the vagal nerve in, for example, the back of the ear, the external auditory meatus, and stimulate any of your internal organs and anywhere that that vagus goes? How many of you knew that? So we have a no here, we have a yes from John. No, no. Okay, yes, that's good. So I just want you to stick in your head when, you, when you're looking at the vagus nerve, look at all the branches where it's at and just say, okay, for example, the back of the ear, uh, you get hit in the side of the head, you know, with a soccer ball, it hits your ear, plasters against the back of your skull. Now you have, start having trouble with your internal organs, but it's because you have a problem on the back of your ear that needs to be looked at. Now, we, uh, we tend to think of the uh, auriculotherapy as everything on the basically the front of the ear, but not the back of the ear. And I teach an acupuncture class where we go into the back of the ear. But the biggest thing that I want you to carry away from that is that the sympathetic nerves basically uh, have their biggest presence on the front of the ear and the parasympathetic on the back of the ear, okay? And these are arterial chemoreceptors when stimulated by hypoxia. So these carotid bodies, when you're depriving yourself of oxygen, that's what stimulates them. When you have uh, hypercapnia, when you have too much uh, uh, carbon dioxide in the bloodstream or elevated hydrogen ion concentrate in the blood elicits a reflex increase in the rate and volume of ventilation through neural connections with the array of respiratory centers in the brainstem. So these interacting with those in the lung, which we talked about earlier, you know, become a big thing right there. So basically anywhere along that whole chain of carotid bodies and where this a uh, whole system interacts can affect respiration. And guess what? You know, when you, when an older uh, individual dies, it's usually because of either respiratory or a kidney issue, okay? So we're gonna be exploring that in the future also, but here is kind of a preclude to it. 
They have tightly packed collections of Glomus type one cells storing dopamine. Dopamine, wow, that's used in a lot of drugs there, okay? Other neurotransmitters in the pro protein glomin and are accepted as a variety of chromaffin cell pair neurons and dopaminergic. Okay, so how many of you knew that you could stimulate dopamine to be produced without drugs? Well, why do you need the drugs? Because the body already produces it here, okay? So we can get the nervous system in that area, in these areas to work properly. And we stimulate the subset of dopamine that the body ought to be producing already. So you're looking at this whole variety of chemicals that we're talking about tonight. And, you know, we, we think, okay, yeah, the body produces them, but we just think about the larger organs. Well, what I'm telling you here, if, if we find the particular spot where the nerve irritation is that's causing that problem, we can cause the body to stimulate that dopamine, not through diet, but through correcting the nervous system, okay? How many of you knew that? So if a person has a rapid pulse, can one stimulate the ear to reduce, reduce the pulse rate? Yeah. Robin, and uh, in part one, we see several areas that can do that throughout the whole body. We mentioned several of them in part one. Okay, so when we're looking at this uh, sympathetic, parasympathetic system, uh, when we really master that and we really start looking at it the way that we should as nerve experts, which we should be, we track down in this whole system that we're talking about, okay? And we're gonna go right back to where we started here. The diffuse neuroendocrine system. Now I hope it's making more sense to you. By stimulating where the nervous system is hung up along these nerve chains, we are stimulating the individual cells to produce what they should be producing. And uh, there's this negative feedback loop in the body upon which the whole body relies to work properly. And we tend to look at it as, oh, these large organs produce these hormones, okay? Now I want you to really take a step back and say, we need to track down in the whole nervous system where the problem is that's causing the nervous system not to react properly at the cellular level that's interfering with this endocrine system at the cellular level, okay? Now, does that make sense to everybody now? We're, we're doing our job right. We're going to cause the cellular level itself to produce hormones the way that it should and not have to rely on the large organs. The large organs relies on feedback from the small cells is what this amounts to. And that's where the neuroendocrine comes into it, okay? So you got a feedback loop going on the endocrine system through the nervous system to the large organs that produce the hormones, okay? So in essence, what we're doing is when we're correcting the nervous system at the cellular level, we're fixing that feedback loop so that not only do the cells work, but the negative feedback causes the large organs to work. So let's, look less at the large organs and look at, hey, why are those large organs not functioning? It comes down to the nerves and how they're interacting at the cellular level, okay? Now, the above is why 
there was an instant shot of adrenaline. Okay, now let's talk about this. Okay. I want to see some guesses in here. How long does it take in an average adult the blood to make a circuit through the body? How long does it take the blood to make a complete circuit through the body? I want to see a lot of guesses in the chat box here. <laughs> Three seconds. Wow. I think we'd be heated up with that, Robin. How long does it take? Several minutes, okay, we have two different ends here. Three seconds, several minutes, two minutes, five minutes, eight minutes, okay. Well, I don't know if that's eight minutes or eight seconds. So we have an eight there. Okay, the answer is about a minute, okay. Now, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the importance of the cells working okay now we put minutes in thank you uh on an instantaneous basis remember they affect they affect the cell itself adjacent cells and then di distant cells okay so you have a lion running at you now you have fight or flight the adrenal the adrenaline starts to flow it takes a minute for it to circulate through the body out of the adrenal gland. So you're going. Come on. Okay, does it take a minute for us to go or do we go immediately? We go immediately because the adrenaline is produced in the cells right now. So we don't have to wait for the adrenaline to circulate through the body from the adrenal glands, although it helps, okay? We can react right now because it's produced right at the cellular level in the same way when you need any hormone. You don't have to wait for it to circle through the body. It's produced right there in the cell itself. Okay, does that make sense? Let's see the answer in the chat box here. Okay, that's good. We're all learning something here. So the above is why there's an instant shot of adrenaline at the sympathetic nerve synapses for fight or flight instead of waiting an average of one minute for circulation to bring it around. This is also why you can stimulate the appropriate chromaffin or sympathetic nerve ending or connection to stop allergic reactions, okay? Now, okay, so you have an allergic reaction. So you have, something that may be death dealing. Uh, people react to peanuts and they can go into shock. What do they do? They shoot them with adrenaline. Okay, well, had you ever thought, well, if the person had enough adrenaline, then they would have taken care of it already. So what do we do with that? Well, if you introduce something that somebody is allergic to. Now, first of all, uh, I would say to go up and down uh, the sympathetic chain, you know, for the first spot there, because you want to go at the, at the biggest synapse that you can first, okay? So you check a person before, they, you already know, they've already said, well, I'm allergic to this or that. Now, the person may elicit an allergic response simply by smelling it, or they may have to put it in their mouth, for example, okay? Well, you take a small tip prod, small ball tip prod, and you go up and down the sympathetic chain before you introduce it. You say, okay, we're gonna try and help you with this thing that you are having a bad reaction to. So you don't get a reaction to it. Now you say, okay, I want you to stick it under your nose. I want you to put it under your tongue. And immediately what you're going to find is you're going to find all of a sudden there's a pain at one of those ganglion areas. It isn't reacting properly. It's actually suppressing the whole feedback system so that the body doesn't react properly with antihistamines and with, you know, adrenaline. So uh, one of the people that 
I'm entering, you know, I walked them through this and they have a they have a person that had allergies to a lot of things. They got it down, they're just reacting to one thing now. They're saying, okay, what do I do with that? Well, the largest accumulation of sympathetic uh, nerve endings are in the palms of the hands and feet, the nose, the lips, and the ears. And it's right in Guyton's physiology, fifth edition, okay? Now, for some reason, in the ninth edition, they only list three of those. Now, as far as I know, uh, anatomy hasn't changed any, so I don't know why they took it out of there. But these are the areas that radiate heat, for example, the most, okay? So, isn't it interesting that that's where you get hand and foot reflexology, hand and foot acupuncture, auriculotherapy, nose acupuncture, because there's a whole lot of sympathetic nerve endings there, okay? So you're going to find a lot of answers to these after you introduce that allergic substance to them. So first, check the sympathetic chain. And if that doesn't give the answer, then start consulting, say, the palms of the hands and feet, the ears, the lips, the nose, the small tip prod, because they are only going to come up and show a pain when you introduce the allergic uh, substance to the body. Then the body's going to go, ah, and then it's going to show a pain response, okay? Why does your body not react with adrenaline so the allergy isn't severe? Well, it's problems with the, at the nerve synapses, such as scar tissue. Correcting this by treating the appropriate synapses appropriately and the allergic reactions will occur. Wow, I really misspelled that one, didn't I? Okay. So, does everybody understand that? I want, I want you to get this about allergies right away. You're going to start being able without even looking at uh, foods, you're gonna be start being able to get somebody not allergic just by checking before and after you introduce the allergen to them that you know that they're allergic to, okay? Does everybody get that? Let's see that in the chat box there. Okay, that's good. Okay. Now, before we move on, yeah, that's a wow. That's a big wow because allergies cause a lot of stuff, which we're going to get into that at a later date also. And if you haven't really checked out allergies, hypersensitivities, food intolerances, they're all different manifestations of the same thing. Uh, then you've missed getting a lot of things well on that patient. Okay. Now, before we move on to the next thing, uh, are there any questions on the presentation tonight? I really want you to get that the sympathetic nervous system stimulates a, a feedback loop that every cell produces every hormone that your body needs. And then it sends a signal to the organ to produce more when necessary. Okay. And it has to do that in order for your cells to work right. Okay. Any any questions on any of this before we move on? Okay. Okay, evidence-based medicine. We all bandy that around. We're all expected to uh, use evidence-based medicine and best practices, but we don't know what it is. Well, I have the document right out, out off the AMA website here. We've reproduced it. Uh, this is available for copy. All you gotta do is press that button or send me an email. If you want that, basically what it is, is 
Um, you have research projects that show certain things and uh, your experience in your in your practice. Okay. Now you can contact me at any time. I am here because I want you to be a, a better doctor. I want you to get patients well. That's why I'm doing these things. That's why I give classes. Okay. So I have my uh, seminars and all that sort of thing. So drbbrk at hotmail.com. Okay. You call me by phone, 469-995. 9907. And if any of you have a have a problem patient you're not getting somewhere with, don't hesitate to call me. That, you know, I want to help you help them. Maybe we can put our heads together and help that patient uh, get well who you're having trouble with. You know, I've talked at length, uh, you know, about uh, videos that uh, we have, well, they're all out. And I started giving uh, a class also on acupuncture. Uh, some of you may or may not know that uh, I was the president of the National Institute of Clinical Acupuncture for a dozen years. And uh, I had several people ask me uh, in Missouri and now in Texas to put together, together an acupuncture puncture uh, class, which I have. So we want to give you, uh, just like everything else, I want you to look at me as a shortcut, okay? Uh, I want you to be able to hear a symptom, ask two or three questions, and go, okay, this one I'm going to do first, second, third, fourth. I want you to start not taking 20 or 30 minutes with a patient. I want you to start taking maybe 30 seconds to two minutes with a patient, okay? I want you to think quickly, and I want you to use stuff that works very, very quickly and last, okay? And that's what all these courses are about. So the videos are part one, two, three, and four. All of them are post-publication now. Since you didn't really know about it, uh, if, you, if you order, you know, the next day, I will let you have it for 250 for a year's viewing. Uh, so it's 250 for each one. Now you can call me and get it. Or you can go online, ttapcenter.com. Under seminars professional, go to the seminar you want. And it gives the description of each one there. Type in film, the phone number, click the down arrow by 395 and choose the 250. I will give you today and tomorrow. Normally, I would say when the presentation is over, we do tomorrow. So what's uh, the first film about? Reflexes only, maybe with minor amounts of scar tissue in the skin, that can get huge results with very little effort on your part and very little pain or discomfort to the patient. Normally get somebody off a cane or a walker in one or two visits, standing up out of a wheelchair in just a few visits. If it's due to weakness, better paralysis, immediately restore significant range of motion, understand how reciprocal innervation can immediately help restore function in different parts of the body. Correct foot drop in the majority of cases, cog wheel rigidity in the arm and leg in most stroke victims, improve hearing and tinnitus in most cases. And we had four people drop out, now five. Uh, I feel bad for them because I'm about to tell you that uh, I've been thinking about flaccid paralysis for a while. Well, former classmate of mine from Palmer uh, moved into the area. He had a stroke a year and a half ago. He has a little contracture in one hand, one leg. The rest of it's flaccid paralysis in the leg and the arm. And he, lost vocalization. He's only able to say, la, 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 la. I've treated him, I think, nine times now. We have him saying words. We have him speaking more and more letters uh, where he had no reflexes in the arms or the legs, except hyperreflexia on the quadricep on that side. Uh, virtually all the reflexes have been restored to normal in the arm and the leg. This is flaccid paralysis. 
guy's in a wheelchair, he is now standing and he's taking steps. All and he all within eight visits. Like I said, I just did the ninth visit on him today. So using the stuff out of part one here, we're getting reactions in flaccid paralysis. Okay. So if I were you, I would think about taking this. And we'll be going over some flaccid paralysis things later on. Now this fulfills the evidence-based medicine. Uh, medicine and best practices off of what we just showed you for the ACA. And that came out directly out of the New England Journal of Medicine. So fibromyalgia, sciatica, like those eggs, all of these, uh, uh, you can tell that you've got the results from standard orthopedic and neurologic tests. Uh, herniated or bulging discs with Milgram's, an operated rotator cuff, frozen shoulder, regional pain syndrome, formerly RSD, burning tongue and mouth, burning pain in the lower extremities, general genitals, upper body, female cyclical menstrual pain, vaginal prolapse, numb hands and feet, drop transverse and cuboid arches, cranial nerve symptoms, hearing loss to differing fre frequencies, tinnitus, uh, all the outlets, syndromes, and tunnel syndromes, uh, cold or burning hands or feet, Renaud syndrome, loss of vibration sense of the feet and toes, dizziness, vertigo, positive pin, spin, pinwheel test, bladder leakage, MS and Parkinson's syndrome, uh, numb hands and feet, prolapse of uh, vagina, uh, uterus, uh, bladder, Drop transverse cuboid arches, hyper and polyhydrosis, uh, ALS, game barre symptoms, seizures, and much, much more. Uh, if you haven't taken part one or got the film, uh, you need to do it. This is not reflexology, AK, CRT, TNT, TBM, transverse friction massage, spinal reflex uh, therapy, contact reflex analysis, and none of that. Okay. This is based on known tenets of acupuncture, trigger point therapy, reflexes, and neurology, found in Laws and Tenets in Dorland's Illustrated Medical Dictionary, Chusage Neurophysiology, Guidance Textbook of Medical Physiology, and others, as taught in all CCE accredited chiropractic colleges. Treatment effects are verifiable by standard orthopedic neurologic exam. I am published in JMP. PT and chiropractic economics on the techniques being taught. I am a former adjunct faculty member, postgraduate division, tech chiropractic college. Now, first part of uh, part two is actually a continuation of part one because we didn't have enough uh, room to fill it in. And the first thing uh, that we teach is how to test over 200 muscles easily in less than 10 minutes and immediately strengthen all the weak ones. Uh, extreme mastery takes a bit longer, may have some of that, by lightly touching one spot on a single muscle. All of them come strong immediately. Then we show you how to find dermatomal pain by palpation, by palpating the whole body, usually in less than five minutes, and immediately decrease or eliminate all pain and flame barriers take a little bit longer, but usually that even goes down by half immediately by lightly touching one spot. And by the way, in all these, you're touching an asymptomatic spot, not a symptomatic spot. Now, what the first one does, it saves you from going from muscle to muscle to strengthen them like an applied kinesiology. The second one saves you from treating trigger points, uh, manual trigger point therapy, such as uh, uh, NIMO technique, okay? Uh, so it saves you a lot of time, a lot of visits. Let me tell you, it spurs a lot of referrals. You won't believe how your practice explodes when you start doing this stuff. Shows you how to treat chronic athletic injuries like hamstrings, ankles, wrists, golfers, elbow, tennis, elbow, rotator cuff, uh, knee, turf toe, shin splints, condor malicious patella, weak ankles, strict knees, plantar fasciitis, neuralgia parasthetica, bronchitis and asthma, gagging, esophageal spasm, reflux esophagitis, TMJ syndrome. 
migraine headaches, chronic whiplash, chronic hip, knee, ankle, shoulder, elbow, wrist pain, tendonitis, bursitis, adhesive, adhesive capillitis, frozen shoulder, pupitrans contracture, trigger finger, Oshkosh Slaughter's disease, chronic fever and sore throat, scar tissue and acupuncture issues, old fractures and chronic pain, bone and sclerotome pain, fibromyalgia, burning pain, resistance, sciatica, spondylolisthesis, uh, herniated or bulging disc, rotator cuff, frozen shoulder, small joint fibrous ankylosis, chronic shingles pain, arthritic finger and joint uh, toe joints, unadhered organs from each other, stimulate circulation, lymphatic flow, diaphragmatic and accessory breathing muscle function, uh, endonasal such as balloon nasoplasty. We show you four different ways to treat endonasally. Eustachian tube, we teach you five different ways to open the eustachian tube. Chronic migraines, uh, migraines, true eustachian tube deafness and near syndrome. Female cyclical menstrual pain, vaginal prolapse, dizziness, vertigo, dropped arches of every kind, uh, foot drop, hearing loss, different frequencies, tunnel syndrome, MS, Parkinson's, ALS, gain bar A, sp ankylosing, spondylitis, symptoms, seizures, much more. Now, the second thing that we teach in this is how to uh, rehab somebody in about a fourth of the time. And the third thing is how to free up scar tissue, usually in just one visit. Now, ART, right in their seminar, says takes four to six visits to free up a muscle. Graston, with the expensive tools, six to 10 visits. Transrestriction massage, right in Syriac Vandal, says 10 to 20 visits. And you cause a lot of pain. It takes a lot of effort on your part. We show you how to do it basically in seconds, little effort on your part, little comparative pain to that patient also, okay? Really, really stimulates uh, referrals because of how quickly you get things done. Now that takes care of scar tissue outside the joint. So therefore, uh, third film is scar tissue inside the joint. So the first one is reflexes alone with light scar tissue in the skin. Second one is rehab and dense scar tissue outside the joint. So third one is dense scar tissue inside the joint. Now here, the first thing we show you, uh, we in seminars, we said, okay, who hurts all the way up and down uh, the paraspinals or has a lot of tension? Usually several hands go up. So we palpate. They go, ow, ow, ow. Yeah, that's tight, that's tight. We'll show you how to adjust a segment like this, just like that. And immediately you go down the paraspinals, the tension's let up, the pain's let up. So you've taken care of the compensatory subluxation, now leaving you with the primary subluxations for the cavitation type of adjustment. Now, I've treated over 40,000 patients from all 50 states, 97 countries, over 3,000 upper level collegiate high school uh, professional athletes, over 800 professional athletes, 12 professional athletic teams, including three foreign national teams. I was the first chiropractor asked to treat uh, the NFL run for daylight and fastest man competition athletes. So, now, here's a lot of things that athletes encounter, but you encounter these with the regular patients. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, you haven't lived unless you've treated a 73-person football squad, all of them in 30 minutes before the game, then at halftime, and then in the hour after the game, too. So basically, you've treated 220 visits with two hour and a half lapses in there. And you learn to get quick results and excellent results. And that carries over to the practice. You know, treat in this one, ribs and costal cartilages, golf and tennis elbow, chondrolomalacia patella, bunions, dementias. By the way, you can clear up dementias by a knee treatment. Sounds fantastic that you learn the mechanism of it there. We've done it in class on a half a dozen people. And 
people are just sitting there, all of a sudden they start talking, they start recognizing people. Uh, it's something else. High arches, flat feet, the best plane is cascavus, dropping transverse cuboid arches, uh, transverse and cuboid arches, uh, reblock, reliably relieve reflex esophagitis, esophageal spasm, upper GI condition, hiatal hernia. Yeah, relieve reflux esophagitis, hiatal hernia. This is an osseous adjustment. It's, you're not adjusting the stomach down. That is relieving a symptom by pygnesiology teachers. We show you, and it's very instantaneous results, and it's very easy to do. Acromial and sternoclavicular joints, chondritis, costochondritis, chondritis, pallets rigidus, hammer and claw toes, bow legs, knock knees, frozen shoulder, adhesive capillitis, rotator cuff, uh, all the tarsals, uh, all the tunnel syndromes, cranial techniques. We show you how to, uh, in three minutes, uh, set up and treat all the cranials. And in particular with autistic children, we have children who haven't talk, talked at all. They speak single words or squeaks and immediately they start uh, speaking words. Uh, they're usually very angry. The anger settles down and they start speaking sentences and then they go back to normal school. Uh, I'm the only chiropractor on the on the recommended doctor list to treat autistic children in the state of Texas because we get these magnificent changes very quickly and had two chiropractors go home they said I just didn't believe what you said and one of them called back and he said uh, I didn't believe it he says I went home and we have this five-year-old child had never spoken a word and I did your three-minute procedure on his cranials he turned around and he said, thank you, doctor. First three words they ever spoke. Both parents were there. They couldn't believe it. They started crying. The doctor started crying. Another doctor uh, you know, called up, said the same thing happened to him. Really easy to do, folks, and it doesn't take a lot of force. We show you how to do it with minimal, minimal force, minimal effort. Stop elusive migraines, improve vision, hearing tinnitus, I improve elusive organ and gland dysfunctions, correct TMJ dysfunction. Now, um, the first three seminars address the nervous system. Now, what you're going to see is look at what we just talked about today. A lot of people that have not been responding to nutritional intervention, biochemical intervention, they're going to clear up automatically because you cleared up the nervous system, which is where the hang up was to start with. And when you start doing this stuff from parts one, two, and three, you're going to notice you need to do a lot less nutritional intervention than you ever, than you ever did, because a lot of it's a neurological issue and you just didn't know how to recognize it, you didn't know how to treat it. Well, that's what these first three seminars are about. Now, the fourth one then is biochemistry. So when you do need to look at biochemistry, that's what this is about. And I, I approach this differently. I approach all these, you know, in a pretty unique way. And my first thing that I recommend when you take any of these seminars is forget everything that you thought you knew about anything because there's probably a better, quicker way to do it, okay? I didn't learn a lot of stuff and I started coming up with these things, okay? And I'm not trying to make you a little me. I'm just saying, hey, look, when something isn't working, try some of the stuff that you learned from it. You'll find that it works in the majority of cases, okay? Now, here in nutrition, what's different about that? Well, we take you through all the nutrients, for example, all the vitamins. We show you where they are in food we say, okay, knowing this, do you really think that you're not taking it in? Most people say, no, everybody ought to be, have plenty of it going in through the mouth. And then I say, okay, unless somebody is on pure junk food, and they're probably getting adequate amounts. And look, vitamins, you don't need a whole lot of them. You don't need trace minerals a lot, okay? 
you do need some of them, but you need to process it. So therefore, if it's going in through the mouth, then there must be a problem with digestion, absorption, transport, transport through the cell wall, transport through the nuclear and mitochondrial membrane, pro uh, a problem, a hang up in breaking down the substance to the basis that it should be, and then secreting or excreting it out of the body. It has, has to be somewhere in that whole chain. Then you have the negative feedback loop. Now the negative feedback loop, for example, when somebody is having a problem with electrolytes, we're, we're taught to give electrolytes. We're taught to give something at the symptom level that they're having. Well, when you properly learn about the negative feedback loop, you start to change your mind a little bit about what you're doing. For example, uh, instead of giving somebody electrolytes, which you may have to a little bit, well, what regulates electrolytes? Well, it's androgens. What regulates androgens? Progesterone. Progesterone, by the way, also regulates uh, cortisol, which has an effect on inflammation and swelling, which are big things right now. And we're, we're basically giving people stuff to suppress it, which isn't bad for a while, but you got to get it where, where it's really coming from. And that's usually progesterone. And what controls progesterone? Pregnenolone. Now, pregnenolone also controls DHEA, and DHEA and progesterone become uh, controls for production of testosterone and testosterone for estrogen. And estrogen has a negative feedback loop back to pregnenolone again. And pregnenolone is controlled also by vitamin D and of course vitamin D by cholesterol and sunshine. So what we try to get at here is you may not want to treat somebody where the symptom is, you may have to look at something two or three steps before where the symptoms occur or two or three steps after where the symptoms occur to get a really good fix on it instead of just palliating the symptoms, okay? Now, I hold an MS in biology emphasizing human nutrition. I'm a master of biologist. I've been a member of six nutritional, medical, and scientific boards. Uh, major nutrition companies that performed over 15,000 nutrition ass assess assessments. So we give strategies for, strategies, for example, somebody who's allergic to everything, virtually every food, they can't eat anything. We show you how to get them to where they can eat almost anything. Autoimmune disorders that really aren't. We want to show you where this autoimmune stuff really is coming from. We're going to hold a class on that too. Dysmenorrhea, excess and prolonged flow. flow. Bone mineralization, osteopenia, porosis, and fracture. Infectial infection, natural antibiotics, and interference of antibiotics. Endogenous poisons, metabolic intermediates, hormone imbalances, seizures, ulcers, bleeding ulcers, constant bloody noses, for example, fungal candida conditions. I'll show you how to get somebody out of systemic candidiasis, two or three weeks stop. Not difficult. Chronic fatigue syndrome. Why supplementation for deficiency seldom corrects it. I talk, I take people off of far more supplements than I put them on to give you an, an idea and they get better quicker. Psychometabolic somatic issues, visceral somatic syndrome, nutrient interdependencies, how one nutrient can affect five others and correct five others. Um, deficiency correction versus catch up short term. Lack of ingestion, or is it bioavailability thing? We show you several different true reasons why somebody is obese, many of which you really haven't connected these dots on. And you know, I've had people lose 150 pounds in 150 days easily, and their skin shrinks up while they're losing the weight, for example. 120 pounds in 120 days, 90 pounds, 90 days, 60 pounds, 60 days. Uh, and it's just by looking at what where the cause really is, okay? And we're not trying to force a weight loss on them. We're correcting them metabolically. Thyroid 
issues, non-thyroid, um, okay, abnormal cell growth, nutritional cause of behavioral disorders, hyper and hypotension, uh, bone issues, depression, hyper and hypothyroidism, hyper and hypoglycemia, et cetera, et cetera. So if you don't have these, please order them, take the classes. Uh, you're gonna learn so much you know, this whole ball game is about getting you and your family and your patients better quicker. That's, that's the up and the down side of it. Now, we also offer mentoring. And uh, here are some uh, mentoring testimonials. Dr. Bonebrake's preeminence mentoring program, what I've been searching for my entire career. Dr. Larson is up in the Minneapolis area. Um, Dr. B's mentoring program is second to none. Wealth of knowledge, expertise shared may be much more thorough and streamlined doctor. He's from California. So this is in Minnesota, this is in California. Mentor program is the best investment I've ever made. I thought I was a good doctor before meeting Dr. Bonebreak. And uh, this doctor is in Cleveland, Ohio. Since mentorship with Dr. Bonebreak, I've seen several improvements in my practice. Patients getting their desired results. This doctor was in Chicago. He reached his goals. He decided he wanted to move where he's always wanted to live. So he's down in Florida and he's starting out with a bang, doing all this stuff. I wasn't sure if I needed a mentor as I already thought my business was very successful. Attended Dr. Bonebreak's scar tissue seminar where I witnessed immediate changes on myself, my brother, and observed other doctors. Uh, this doctor is one of the top uh, practices in uh, not only in the United States, but in the world. We increased his profitability 160% in the first year and a half. That's difficult to do, but it really isn't. I had the top practice in the world. I averaged 640 new patients every month for years. And when uh, 911 happened, most practices went down 30 to 50%, some as much as 70%. Mine went up 1,700%. And folks, it's easy to do. There's no reason why you can't have your dream practice. I can't believe how much my practice has changed in folks since I began mentoring with Dr. Bonebreak. And this is Dr. Taylor in Fort Worth, Texas. I've been private practice 23 years. I own and operate a successful chiropractic sports medicine clinic in Austin. Mentoring is no fluff, no cookie quarter, no one, uh, no one size fits all approach. Basically, I don't try to make you into mini me. I ask you what, what it is that you want. I say, okay, this is what you want. Okay, let's let's show you how to get there. Uh, Robin, I ordered part four, it's been released. Yeah, it was sent to you, Robin. You need to email me and I'll send it again. Yeah, that was sent out. Okay, Gilbert Danforth, Lubbock, Texas. You're gonna make change, fine tune your skills of practice. So do the mentoring. And I've been a sole practitioner for 25 years, had my fair share in some of the seminars, both or consults teachers and techniques, thought I'd seen about it all. I, I was wrong. After attending my first TCAP seminar, I knew uh, I'd be going to all of the seminars. Uh, Drew Johnson, he's down in Fort Worth, Texas. Uh, excuse me, he's in uh, Houston, Texas area. So we have what you need. And we're gonna show you how you can sign up for that. If that's what you so desire to help you get there. Again, I just view myself as acting as a shortcut for you to get you where you want to go quicker. Now I've taken over, I've taken 32 different practice uh, uh, consulting, management, and coaching. And uh, basically every, every one of my practice was already at least five times bigger than the guy I was taking the course from. But you always learn a little from everybody. I've taken over a hundred uh, adjusting classes of the bird rim pelvis. Uh, 39 uh, now extremity seminars, 32 cranial seminars. I'm just trying to show you how to do stuff quicker and easier and get the desired result. Well, uh, helping with your practice is the same thing. 
you know, why, why wait? You know, I'm, I'm the type of guy, probably the only, um, the only reason maybe that I might have done the things that I did is I've never waited around. If I want something, I just immediately went, went for it, okay? Waiting around really is not going to get you anywhere quick. Might eventually get there, but why, why not get there quicker? Preeminence mentoring. Everyone is a good fit. How preeminence mentoring works, this program enables you to become top level. Rapid, efficient, patient response with scientific medical methodology found in medical literature, become a nerve and biochemistry expert. This is what I want you to become. I want you to become a communications expert with patients also. You get the great results, you get them very quickly, you learn how to communicate. Uh, I don't talk a lot in my practice. I just get right to it and I'm, I'm very short and to the point and I don't take a lot of time with it. Get referrals from everywhere. Like I said, I've I've gotten, I've seen people from all 50 states and 97 countries. No reason that can't happen to you. None whatsoever. You see me, I misspell stuff on here. I stumble bumble along. I'm very monotone. I am not a David Singer with a big personality. You don't have to have that. My practice is many times bigger than uh, Dr. Singer's. I'm not putting him down at all. I'm just saying, you don't have to have that. I'm, I'm intimidated by his personality, okay? I don't think I could ever do what he does that, that way. Uh, you know, I, I stutter a lot. My gosh, you know, if I can do what I've done, there's no reason you can't do it, okay? Get referrals from everywhere. Get paid what you're worth. Low stress, better family time. Others have committed and changed their lives. It's your turn. Just close your eyes and imagine the business of your dream smooth running, plenty of highly satisfied and enthusiastic patients, as many as you want. Financial security, time to enjoy your family, time to exercise regularly, great health. You can have all those. Three reasons preeminence mentoring works for you. You'll devote the effort, time, and dedication to get what you want. Charisma is not necessary. There's group or one-on-one -on -one mentoring that's very affordable. Your next step is First, you gotta commit to be superlative. You go to the link ptapcenter.com, choose the mentoring level that fits you, commit to change your life. Here are the different mentoring levels. 12 month group mentoring. One group call per week for 12 months. That's 52 one hour sessions. Everybody gets to ask questions. I give the answers. You learn from what I answered everybody else. You throw in your questions. 500 a month or one payment of 5,000 saves $1,000. Ask whatever you want about any aspect of your practice, hiring, firing, associates, how to talk with patients, how to treat patients, any, anything you can imagine. Step up your practice to the level you want, desire, up your income dramatically in accordance with your level of commitment. Get paid for what you do. My motto is, People pay for what they want. If somebody's car broke down, if they if their transmission went away, they find money for it. Quit treating people's wallets. If you show them you have what they want, they will find the money to pay. I don't care if it's cash or insurance. I have several doctors that are on cash basis only, and they're doing just as well as the ones that are on insurance with a lot less hassle, by the way. Get answers regarding how to run your practice in the most uh, efficient manner possible. Think and reason quickly in any practice situation. Give talks that give get lots of new patients. My average uh, weekly talk. My average weekly talk. Um, uh, I had 35 to 50 patients come in. Virtually every one of them, every time, became patients immediately. Don't ask for patients' referrals, get scads of them. Communicate in such a way as to draw referrals to you from all over. How to testify in court and depositions, how to write narrative reports in the best manner possible, situations or answers that solve your own situations, how to best treat given conditions for quickest results. You can choose to step up to one year one on one mentorship in the first three months and get all those benefits, which we'll get to in a minute. 
The second one is six month one on one mentoring, one call a week for 26 weeks, just you and me one on one. Talk about anything whatsoever about your practice. Now it's just you and me one on one. This is what I have now. I don't go in saying, okay, this is what you do with your practice. No. I say, okay, tell me about where you feel the things are in your practice. I think you know it far better than I could, unless I just sit there and watch all that. Okay. People come up with them. I say, okay, here's how you address that in the quickest, most efficient way. And usually we get that part. It doesn't take that long. Mostly people want to know how to treat those difficult patients. Is I emphasize always do a before and after on each patient, each visit, so that they know that the improvement they got is what you just did. We teach you how to communicate very quickly with that patient uh, that steps up referrals without ever asking for them. Okay. And you'll be just astounded at how quick and easy it is. How to communicate is at least as important in patient treatment if you want to practice your dream. You'll get notes uh, to each of the TCAP seminars in this. I'll cover what's at the top of your radar now. If you want to step up to the one year one on one mentorship in the first three months, you get all those benefits. Now you have the 12 month one on one mentoring. So you get 52 one hour sessions with me. It's a thousand a month or one payment, 8,000 saves $4,000. And the six months, a thousand a month of one payment of four four thousand saves two thousand dollars. I don't think I said that there. Sorry. Now I'm working on now. Uh, okay, you get all films for a year's viewing. You don't have to pay for those. You get a link on your website. We're working on that right now. I have thousands of doctor and patient testimonials on a plethora of different conditions. Uh, and we're going to be putting those up in an alphabetical order to where you can direct patients to the part one, two, three, or four, and say, go on there and look at the conditions they take care of. They click their condition, condition of a friend or loved one, it takes them right to them. They get a testimonial of patients and doctors on it. Now it's more than just you saying that you can help with these. They're seeing that a lot of other people took the training, they get the results really steps up your referrals. So you have one for each, one, two, three, and four. Now you don't have to get in the mentorship for that. That's uh, $50 a month if you don't do the mentorship, but you get it free for a year with the mentorship. Now when I put those on my website and I had it so prospective patients could go on it, it was good for 20 new patients for each part film, okay? And so that's 80. And then I directed my established patients to go on. And I patients said, I didn't know you could take care of that. So they got on again and they said, I need to come in for that. I had no idea you could take care of uh, you know this situation until I went on your website and saw that there with you know with uh, the testimonials of the patients and doctors. So all these were good for. 20 new patients each, prospective patients and established patients re-upping. It's good for 160 new patients every single month. Just putting this stuff up on my website. Very cheap for the money. Doctor blog, that's going up real soon, where you can interact with other doctors for each course. That's $50 per month for each course. Not only will they talk about and say, hey, I got this, uh, result on this patient by doing this TCAP thing. They'll also say, well, I also threw in this from my own experience. You're not only going to get stuff that works in TCAPs, you're going to learn some stuff that the, the doctors did outside of TCAPs to get a result also. Very much worth it. Those are going to be free with one on your uh, one year one on one mentorship for a year. Now the one year one on one Anything you want to talk about, you get 52 one hour sessions with me. You also get all four of the courses, all, all four of the films. You also get uh, 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 the link, you get the blogs. 
and to get 12 seminars online or in person. We're going to be putting uh, the videos online so you get CE seminars. Okay. So you can either pick to go to 12 uh, in person seminars or you can get them online. You can get any combination of those. Those will all be thrown in free with it. I'll cover anything that's on the top of your radar, radar first. Before I suggest anything, you know where your weaknesses are. You're going to get a certificate when you become proficient in those parts. Now, if you decide to extend another year, it's just half the price. So if you re-up, it's $4,000 to re-up for a year after you've completed the first year, if you do that one year one-on-one. -on -one. So basically, don't wait. The longer you wait, the longer it takes to get there. All I am is a shortcut to get there. So commit now. Jump into it. That's how you make quick changes. You act immediately. Achieve your dream practice. Business results depend on effort and following directions. I can't do it for you. I can tell you how, but you have to act. Lose your excuses. Take consistent action to improve. If you'll do this, sign up. If not, please don't. You're not going to get any results if you don't act. We give you the information and encouragement. You take the action to improve your life. And that's the up and down part of it. So I would encourage you to do that if you want your dream practice and you don't have it already. So are there any questions right now? Hey, we finished ahead of time for once. Any questions at all over here in the side box? Any questions at all? In the side box before we cut off for the day. Now's the time to ask it. Ask any question you want on anything. Anything that we covered. Okay, thank you so much for attending. In a couple of weeks, we're going to have a, another really good session. And uh, y'all have a